Hi, if anybody's on, um, be going uh, live in a minute or so. Hi, Rashita. Okay, so I think I'll start. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> I just got a message from my children. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Martin Hyde um, or Martin D Hyde, um, and I'm an artist based in Derbyshire. Um, I'm a contemporary artist and um, predominantly paint, um, but I sort of see myself as a conceptual artist really, because everything I do is based around sort of sort of themes, and I work working sort of um, the paintings can change quite a bit between different series and things as I'm reacting to those subjects um i am currently in obviously lockdown um but it's lifted quite a bit around here but um i have a studio so at the moment i'm in, just in the spare room um but normally i have a studio in a place called harlem art space um which is in worksworth which is a very cool place it's kind of set up it's like an old converted mill and um it's kind of set up like like an art school so you have your studio space but it's kind of not too high walls and an open open front and things so that's very good um with everything that's been going on it obviously income has really suffered um so luckily um we they they got some help from the landlord um and they've also got an out council grant so luckily uh, rents um been taken care of which is been a great relief. Um, so yeah, so I ha have a studio there. Um, my art practice is predominantly painting, as I say, but I do do other things that supplement my sort of income as an artist. So I'm also a designer, graphic designer and illust illustrator. Um, and often I kind of combine those together. So I thought I would uh, Firstly, because it's kind of I've got stuff everywhere. I'll, I'll show you some of the. Um, I want to show you some records. So these records, predominantly, it starts off. Um, a band will come to me, and they will choose art that I've already painted, um, which has similar themes to, um, to. What my art's about and what their music's about. Um, so I've got a few examples here. Um, so this is this is um, this is uh, a record by the band called Lau. And this was the Midnight and Close Down album, um, which is a, a vinyl. So this painting that is on the front, um, that was a painting called Trickle Down Economics. Um, Hi, is it here? Um, so the painting was about similar themes to what the album was about so that was why it was used and it was also following on from the previous album that i've done the artwork for um which was that one see that um these are kind of both big in real life of big paintings but sort of similar theme on that one um and what's lovely about the records is that i mean i, I love records anyway so this is another painting um, which is the center of the gatefold um, called Transfiguration. That, that's like a yeah, very big canvas that is the original one. And uh, um, it's another painting on the back. And then sort of you get into the records and you get like stuff like that. I don't know if you see that. Sorry, it's a bit weird. Um, interestingly, that was a painting I did actually at Art Call. 
um, when I was on a residency there. Um, I was exploring like spin paintings and uh, enjoyed them as a kid. And the depression I suffer from is cyclic. So that was kind of the theme of that. There's another one of these paintings on there, um, which you can see. So I really enjoyed doing that. And I've done um, quite a few. Here's, here's another one I did, um, which is, I've got a nice painting on the front. This is a band called The Little Unsaid on Reveal Records and uh, painting on the back with a nice, two nice paintings. Um, this one's called Distant Creation. This one was called Shadowcaster. Sort of similar areas. And then on the inside, there was like uh, nicer paintings and things. So there's lots of, so it's really good. And, and what I found is, because I'm a big music fan and I, I played in bands um, for a long time, and that was my big thing, really. And I actually moved really from music to painting. Uh, I used to write like music, but um, I think it's a really good crossover because, um, obviously, traditionally, I, I, I'm in sort of like the fine art galleries and things like that, and you get a very fine art audience. But crossing over into the music, it's like you get these kind of cool people who are into their music as well, and um, reach a whole new audience. And for me, uh, you know. It's important for my art to be seen. It's it's no good it being stuck in a cupboard or something like that. So I think um, yeah, I really enjoy that. I'm also a designer, so I enjoy doing the design aspects of it as well. So I think um, I, the older I've got and the more art I've done, the re I used to very much keep the art and design really separate. Um, and there's a bit of a reason for that, really, because. Um, like for example when I've taught design or illustration you get a lot of people because there's a lot of cool graphic artists out there and uh, cool kind of the kind of fusing art and design and illustration and the big difference between design illustration and specifically art is art's personal and um, design and illustration tend to have a purpose in terms of someone's commissioned you to do something which will sell a product so I was always quite keen to separate those. Um, and I think I've realized that my, my love of painting and art, and fine, fine art, um, and my love of music, it goes together really well. So I'm quite happy to, to merge them. And I think this lockdown's made me think that even more, you know, I think you've got to do your own thing and any opportunity to get your work out there is, um, very important sort of thing. So one of my most recent series I did was a series called Suspension. And so that was the paintings I was uh, sort of finished before lockdown, I suppose. And they were used for this album, um, which is a new album that just came out for uh, an artist called Dan Whitehouse. Um, and as you can see, paintings kind of, you see those. So, um, so I thought, show you some of those sort of thing, and then actually show you the real thing. So, do that in the, sorry, it's got a wrapper on, so it's to protect them. You can sort of see, it's kind of quite mirrored and things like that. Um, so this series, um, the concept behind this series was kind of the difference between order and chaos. And um, one of uh, the things I'm quite interested in is just that the, uh, the part of what helped me get better as well was like understanding your, your inner person, your inner voice or, and the outer voice. And, and there is definitely a, a lot going on between that idea of um, chaos and order. And um, so that was what that sort of series was about. It was also based on the idea of being pulled between different worlds and things like that. Um, and interestingly, because <laughs> some people will say, oh, it looks quite spacey, um, which is obviously like a literal interpretation of an abstract painting. Um, but actually there, were, there was some space stuff in there really, because um, it was, um, I was quite influenced by lecture um, about uh, the sort of unit, complex forms and um, simple forms 
um, and the idea of stardust, um, Professor Brian Cox, and um, I was very interested in that as well, the idea of chaos and order. Um, so those paintings um, were created with an element of randomness and an element of uh, order. Um, so yeah, that was a good series. So in terms of um, lockdown, I was going through a bit of um, a creative block before lockdown happened. Um, and then it happened and it was sort of, it's quite hard. It's was, it was quite hard. Well, it was hard for everybody, obviously. Um, but for me, it was like, it was like holding like a big mirror in your face because as an artist, you have lots of ups and downs and there's a lot of, um, you have to have a lot of self-belief and, um, you know, a lot of times you're asking why you're doing it, I suppose, because there's a lot of risk involved, um, sort of. Um, but I, I found it I found it useful because it has allowed me to reflect on what I really want to do. I was reading a good book. I brought some books to show you in a minute. Um, just trying to find this one. It isn't actually this book, so that's that's not the best example. But it's by a man called Austin Kleon. It was um, I think it's called Keep Going, which is one of the things you have to do as an artist. Just keep going. Um, uh, I was reading a thing. I was just talking about don't get off that bus, stay on the bus, keep going. Because <laughs> so many people, they, they start on the journey as an artist and then they kind of get off the bus and then they realise that they're missing art in their lives and they have to go back to the beginning. So I think part of being an artist is persistence and just keep going. So that was a really good book that kind of motivated me. But what, it, what the point I was trying to get to um, was... Um, one of the things it said is it's very hard to actually write a list of things you want, but what it is quite easy to do is write a list of things you don't want. Um, so I managed that, so that was good. And um, yeah, it was hard to beginning uh, at the beginning of lockdown because um, all my income just kind of disappeared. Um, all my kind of supplementary income as well from like things like design and stuff all stopped. Um, but luckily, um, you know that kind of picked up again a bit and um yeah i got a nice commission to do another album um and uh a band called jan who um are based in like they're based in japan and barcelona which is pretty exotic um and they had the idea of letting me kind of name songs and all sorts of stuff and doing the art and um one of the ideas for the art was to literally paint kind of what I heard, you know, so um, a bit different to my kind of some of my other stuff, which is about, you know, specific themes and things to do with isolation, depression, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've really enjoyed doing that and they're a lot more colourful than normal, so I'm going to show you them. <laughs> you might hate them, um, but that's, that's the way it goes, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so it is I'm getting to show you. So these are again our paintings. Don't you see that? I should hold it the right way up. <laughs> um, so this was inspired by a song called um, Transmission, which was on the album. So basically, I just listened to the album over and over again in my headphones and painted it in the garden. I think all the sunshine has definitely affected me because it's certainly not as doomy as my traditional work. So. <laughs> I've done five in total for, for the band, so we'll use this over different artworks and things like that. So there's all sorts of things going on there. This is the one I've just, just almost finished. I'm um, just working on that one. So yeah, so yeah, that's been kind of interesting. So that's been cool. Um, yeah, I thought I'd do, uh, one of the things that suggested for me to do is talk about some of my influences and th things I like and stuff like that. So I thought I'd have a go doing that. 
Unfortunately, they're all in a different order to what I need to speak, so but it should be all right. So in terms of when my, my big influences in our art, um, you know, have to be Rothko. Um, love Rothko's work, and I love kind of the idea behind Rothko's work, the idea of painting emotions and what we feel. But that's the sort of art I like personally, and um, it's the sort of what I'm trying to do, is evoke an emotional response. It's about what's internal. Um, and actually one of the, not necessarily saying all Rothko's work was honest, but one of the things, um, journey of getting better from um, the cyclic depression I suffer from, which is called cyclic myopia, um, is the idea of being honest. And um, and that was part of where the sort of art process I have now, it's just about being really honest and not really worrying about bearing all. So um, I think that, um, that sort of relates to um, Rothko. Um, this is a great book as well, so it's really worth getting. I think um, Ai Weiwei is, yeah, he's a, he's a really important artist today. Um, he's, um, he's just really interesting and he, and he and he he's generally makes a difference with his art, which is so, so kind of different to my art. Obviously, obviously he's a, a fantastic artist, but, um, I think he's really interesting um, and I think he does a lot of important things and raises awareness about a lot of important things. Um, he's just a really interesting guy as well. This book is fantastic, so you all want to run out and read that if you've got nothing to read. Uh, love Ben Nicholson. In fact, I love all the kind of Sentai style artists of him. Oh, it's someone I, I, I really love. Um, and actually got into him relatively recently, like in the last three or four years. Um, I went to, um, I think it was called Queer British Art, I think it was called, something like that. Um, but it was a great exhibition and this really stood out to me. I, lo I, I love, I do put quite a lot of figures in a lot of my work. Um, I just love his work. I, just, I love his um, palette and sort of the, the meaning, sort of the expression and the figures and things like that. So love him. Um, uh, I love Grayson Perry as well, um, as I think most people do who are into art. I think he's, I, lo I love his actual work, but I also think he's brilliant at um, sort of talking about his art and uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy that. So that's great. And that's a great book. That's about his sort of kind of his biography, really, his early life. But there's loads of other ones. That's just the one I picked up. Um, Giuseppe Panan, I think that's how you say it. I probably probably said that wrong. Um, his work's amazing, um, really interesting. And he kind of does things with like nature and like really interesting sculptural work. Um, so I would suggest you check him out. You might be able to still check out some of his work at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. Um, oh, the kind of granddaddy of uh, modern art, I suppose. But I love his his work. I love his paintings. Uh, I love the drama in them. But I like drama and things like that. Um, Jean Michel Basquiat, um, again, quite popular artist. I just love how expressive his work is, and um, I, I, yeah, I just 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 love it. It's really interesting. I think he was really interesting as well. Um, so that was a good one. I've got Rothko. I think we should have Rothko twice. <laughs> I doubled up on him. Um, and then there's this there's other sort of kinds of things like um, so this these are a design company. They were uh, Designers Republic. Um, and I think this is where design and art kind of crosses over in terms of fine art, I suppose. Um, but you might remember them, they did all the sort of, um, they did um, things like the Wipeout games and things like that. But, and they've done a lot of album covers and things, so that, that's really cool. Um, oh, I love, I love this, 
he's a great photographer I like, um, kind of rock band photographer. Um, this is a gorgeous book. Um, some Depeche Mode and the Cave and those sort of people. He's great. And uh, Stanley Donwood, the Stanley Donwood, love ready hairs, anything they do. So um, that's really great. I really love him. He's a, he's interesting as well because he's kind of that crossover between fine artist and band artist. I mean, whether the, there needs to be any differentiation, I don't really know. I don't think there probably does. I don't see what the difference is really. It's just if you're an artist, you're an artist. So that's a great book as well. I love that stuff. So um, I think my 20 minutes is up. Um, happy to chat further if anybody's got any questions. Um, you can either message me now uh, on this video or um, you can uh, drop me a line on my website, on my Facebook. Um, always happy to talk about art and things like that. And obviously if you wanna buy paintings, that's good. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just hang around for another um, 10 or 20 seconds and uh, if there's no questions, I'll, I'll go. Thank you for everybody who's uh, watching. And um, yeah, stay safe and I'll see you around. Oh, it's more questions. Oh, sorry. I just just realised there's actually <laughs> scrum. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just saw the top three comments. I thought that was uh, uh... okay. So, uh, Rashida, I guess a lot of people are asking this question to themselves. Pete, now um, that what is my space in the world? Yes, I think they are, and I think it's weird because. I don't know if everybody's been feeling the same, but there's been some really amazing behaviors through lockdown. And it was like, there was a period when everybody was locked down and it was like, you know, there's all these kind acts and it's like wonderful. And now there's all this awful stuff going on in America and, you know, bad behavior again in the UK. And it's like, yeah. Uh, but I, I think that there is a real place for art, obviously. Um, Grayson's proved that with uh, Art Club, <laughs> um, but I think I think that there is a need for art because it's it's like um, especially in times of um, lockdown. And when I say art, I don't just mean painting or you know contemporary art. I just mean bands and everything like that, filmmakers. Um, so yeah, I think that's um, very very important. Ah. Uh, I love your colour palette you used in, in those. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. I oh, really like the new recent works. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, keep going. It is in the comments there. So, uh, have I been watching Grayson's Art Club? Yes, with um, them. With <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've been really enjoying it. Um, I think he's got a tricky balancing act a bit with um, being, you know, like a fine artist, contemporary artist and some of the choices he makes, but I kind of get it. But I, I think, um, yeah, it's really good. It's really cool. Uh, enjoying listening to you and seeing your work as I colour in Paw Patrol pops. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, we definitely need a top breeds list from you after. Yeah, I think you do. What's your favorite album cover of all time? Oh, that would probably be, um, oh, I reckon some Radiohead one, probably OK Computer, I think, uh, which was by Stanley Donwood, which I showed you earlier. Uh, yeah, OK, so I think that's everybody answered. Um, thank you ever so much, and um, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.